On this episode, I'd like to go over why you may want to shorten the length of your sukkah, and if you want to shorten it, how to do it. Now I have two shinai here. This one is one that I've already shortened, and this one is the standard length that you'll find when you first buy the shinai. And as you can see, this one is about an inch or so shorter. The sukkah length is about an inch or so shorter than this one. And the reason that I shortened it was it's an issue of swing mechanics. What I mean by swing mechanics is that when I'm at my full extension, I need to be able to reach the target and still keep my body relatively square to the target. And if the sukkah is too long, then it forces me to rotate my left shoulder back. I cannot keep my body square to the target. If I want to keep my body square to the target and still have full extension of both arms, geometrically, that's only possible if my right hand comes down the sukkah a little bit. And if you look at some high-speed footage, some senju, some players, their thumb will actually contact their forearm. So the limiting geometry of the shinai is the length of the sukkah in terms of how you can get full extension and still keep your body square. So a good rule of thumb is to put the shinai in the crook of your elbow like this. And if the index finger doesn't touch the top of the sukkah, that means the sukkah is too long for you. This is a shinai that I've already shortened. And as you can see, my index finger touches the top of the sukkah. So now I'll show you how to shorten the sukkah. To shorten it, you'll have to take it off the shinai. So once you've taken the sukkah, or sukkagawa strictly speaking, the sukkah leather, once you've taken that off the shinai, then you will have to flip it inside out. To flip it inside out, you want to start it with your finger, and I just happen to have this back scratcher. And I'm going to start inverting the sukkah leather inside out so that it comes out the other end. You don't have to completely invert it. As long as you have a few inches of material to work on, on the other end like this, that should be enough. And what I'm gonna do is cut about an inch and a half off the end of the sukaga. Now I have done this a number of times, so I kind of know, just by eyeballing it, how much material I need to take off. But when you're doing it for the first time, you will actually want to measure it to an inch, maybe an inch and a half maximum. And uh, it's like carpentry, you measure twice and cut once. So for me, it's about that much. You don't want to over-shorten the sukkah. It's not like uh, a little bit is good, so wow, uh, a lot must be even better. No, that's not the way it works. There has to be a certain balance in the sukkah length. So if you shorten the sukkah too much and it becomes too extreme, then the shinai becomes very hard to control. So at first you want to take a slightly conservative approach and see how it feels. And then the next time, maybe you can shorten it a little bit too much. And I can tell you from experience that I've gone overboard. And when I have gone overboard and the sukagao is too short, uh, the shinai becomes very hard to handle. Once you've removed the material from the end of the sukkah, you'll want to measure about one centimeter. one centimeter, that's about half an inch, maybe a little bit less. If you're doing this for the first time, 
then you might want to draw a line at that one centimeter mark across the sukkah. Like that. And then same for the other side. Like that. And this is where you're going to stitch the leather back up. So what you'll need is four holes. One, two, three, four on each side. One, two, three, four. So if you think of it as a circle, you don't want to space them out evenly here. You'll want two holes closer to the edge and then evenly spaced out that way. So to create those holes, you can use an auger like this, which you can get at any hardware store. And you could use leather hole punches, which I've seen online as well. You could buy those on Amazon. But this works fine for me. So I'm going to create four holes using this auger. I just want to create holes so that when I thread it through, that I don't have to work too hard to push the needle through the leather. Okay, so you want some kind of surface to work on. I just have an old notepad here so that you can lay the leather against it. And the good thing about this method is that when you create a hole on one side, it'll create an indentation on the other side that gives you a good reference. Then I'll use the auger to widen the holes a little bit, each one. Watch out for your fingers on the other side as this comes through. If you use a leather hole punch, you won't need to do this step. That'll be a lot more convenient. And you want to repeat the step to create four holes on the other side as well. Now once you've created those four holes on each side, you'll have to sew the sukkah back together again. And for that, it helps to have a very thick needle. And for the thread, just dental floss works fine. Using the four holes, I'll just thread the needle through the holes, alternating up and down. Like that. Keep on going all the way around. And then once you've gone all the way around, just tighten it. If you tighten it, it'll fold over like this. Basically two folds. And then just tie it off. So it's tied off like that. And I'm just going to cut the excess thread. So if you've done everything correctly, this is what the end of your sukkah should look like. Now you just have to flip it back. One thing that I learned about flipping the leather back, is that rather than trying to push the leather this way, it's actually easier to use a pair of long nose pliers and pull 
the leather out this way. So grab a little bit of material and then pull it out. You'll save yourself a lot of aggravation of trying to push the leather out this way. It just works better by pulling the leather this way. So once you've pulled the leather back out, the end of the Tsukagawa should have a cross pattern on it, like this. So that's how you shorten the Tsukagawa. Right now, the new one is slightly shorter than this one, but over time the leather stretches. So as I use this, this will start stretching just a little bit, uh, which is another reason why you should maintain your shinai properly and tighten the suru periodically. And as you're shortening the tsukagawa, this is going to be probably a new shinai that you're using, so that's also a good opportunity to oil your shinai. You should try to oil your shinai before the first use, if you want to give it longevity. And that is how you shorten the sukkah.